tradable game cards. Sometimes you trade them for other game cards. You don't have to pay anything to play either of these cards. They both tap for a green mana. Same thing, right? Sure. Sometimes you trade them for money. I don't think so. It's not 1995 anymore. Either way, condition affects the value. Is a pack fresh card a mint condition card? What about near mint? Near mint is almost mint, so it would be okay to have a nick in the edge, right? Slightly played? Hmm. Mostly played? Excellent. Excellent minus. Poor condition. Damaged. This one's pretty rough. Looks like someone wadded it up. It's got inking. I'd say that's damaged. Or even fake. So, there's so many variables, it can be a source of frustration for buyers and sellers when they don't agree on an item's condition. So how do we solve this problem? What if there were an impartial third party that everyone could use to get an opinion on an item's condition? And while they were at it, maybe they could tell us if the item was real or not. Grading companies. You can pay a grading company to get a third party opinion on your item's condition. Then people can compete with each other or themselves in an attempt to collect the highest scoring third party opinion. While the grading companies do supply a protective case and label to help with identifying which opinion goes with which card, their main product is their opinion, which means that the reputation is very important. At the moment, the most popular grading company for Magic Cards is BGS, Beckett Grading Service. BGS has very nice slabs. They're durable enough that you can walk on them without damaging the card. BGS also offers subgrades, which are very popular. Subgrades create additional levels of competition using terms like Basic, Quad, and Quad Plus. The popularity of BGS has created long wait times. There's also some risk that your card could get lost or damaged in the mail on the way to or from the grading company. Because of these risks and wait times, some collectors prefer to buy cards that have already been graded instead of submitting their own cards. This also allows them to see the grading company's opinion before purchasing the card. This demand for already graded cards has created investors who submit cards for grading with the intent of selling those graded cards as soon as possible. There's nothing wrong with that. They're getting paid to save people time and risk. BGS has attractive grading fees for someone who's trying to grade cards for profit. Unfortunately, BGS has problems with accuracy and consistency. Their typical response to these problems is to sweep it under the rug as a simple mistake. A one-time occurrence that will never happen again. They're not one-time occurrences, though. They seem to be a somewhat regular thing. You can only sweep stuff under the rug for so long before people start to notice that there's a big lump in the rug. Let's have a look at some of those mistakes. All right, we'll start off with an easy one, a simple typo. Mark Moole. Anyone could have made this mistake, but you don't want to see mistakes on cards worth around a thousand dollars. Next, we have this weird upside down E. This was probably caused by some kind of a problem with the label printer. I can't be too hard on BGS for these two errors, but I saw them and I wanted to include them in the video. Next, we have a freshly graded Alpha Black Lotus with the label sealed into the case crooked. 
You see the corners there. You can see that's alpha. And here is the label. It's all diagonal. Whoever was slabbing the car did it wrong and didn't fix it. And then the shipping department also didn't have the problem fixed before shipping it to the customer. It would have been nice if they weren't so careless with alpha lotuses. Here is a regeneration, again with the label in the wrong spot, sealed in there. And a camel with a, a label that's just a bit off. Life matrix. Again, that label's just not quite in the right spot there, is it? I'd think something like that would be pretty noticeable. This Swords to Plowshares arrived with the label outside the sealed case. Without the serial number inside the case, there's nothing to prove which label belongs to this card. Anyone could crack open a graded card and place that label with this card. Without a label inside the case, this is essentially an ungraded card. Speaking of not paying attention to what they're doing, they managed to seal this card into the case upside down. Hopefully they pay more attention than this when they're deciding what condition grade to assign to a card. Again, the shipping department is the last person to see the card, and the last chance for quality control. They make sure that the right items are being sent to the right person. Apparently they're not paying attention either. They should have noticed such an obvious error as the card being upside down in the case, and fixed it before sending it to the customer. Sure, it's just a basic land, but the customer paid for a service, and they're not getting what they're supposed to get. This is actually one of the more frequent mistakes that BGS makes. Here's another example. That Brain Geyser, this Dark Ritual, Beta Sinkhole, Upside Down Drop of Honey. Volcanic Island, Portal Three Kingdoms Island, all upside down. Check out this pirate ship. The card and label are both upside down, and they're facing the back side of the case. See the logo here? This would be a good place for that meme that says, I'm not even mad, I'm impressed. I kind of like this one, actually. BGS labeled this Mox Diamond as Japanese. The card is actually traditional Chinese. This is a pretty easy mistake for people to make. Not everyone is multilingual. However, BGS is supposed to be a professional company that is being paid to know the difference and label the card correctly. Providing their customers with inaccurate information severely hurts the value of their service. There's no reason to pay them if the public can't trust the information on the label. In the future, I'll probably make a video on how to identify the different languages used on magic cards. Who knows, maybe BGS will use it as a training video and improve their service. Here's an English card that they labeled as Chinese. They could use some help. Which artwork each person considers to be version 1 or version A has always been an issue, but I would have hoped that BGS would at least be consistent with whatever method they choose. These two matching artworks are labeled as two different versions. This says version 2, and this says version 1. That can't be correct. Similarly, this one and this one have different artworks and they're both labeled as version 2. These swamps, both the same artwork, version 1, version 2. Here it is again. Unlimited Islands, different artwork, both version 2. That just can't be. Since the BGS website is written in English, I assume that they're able to read the language. The card name of every card is printed right on the card. There's no excuse for getting this wrong. Did they even look at the card? These planes are labeled as swamps.
Tsunami Forest. Yeah, I get it. There's a little tree on the card, but that doesn't make this a forest. Can you trust their grading if they didn't look at the card enough to read the name of the card? Maybe this grades for a different card. This is another mistake that BGS frequently makes. Wild growth? Scath zombies. If this were plants versus zombies, I think the plants are winning. Black Lotus, Black Lotus, Mishra's Workshop, Mishra's Workshop. Clearly those are just swapped, but this shouldn't happen. Beta Time Twister, Beta Time Twister. However, the card is a time walk. Hey, it says time in it, right? That's close enough. Hot dog buns? Those are some round, flat hot dogs. It says buns. That's close enough. No, that's not the way it works. Tundra? Taiga. They got the first and the last letter correct. Ruby? Emerald. Sorry. Okay, Savannah Lions. I see the Savannah, but the Lions seem to have escaped. Look out! Antiquities Strip Mine, Small Tower in Forest. Up until then, I wouldn't have known that this used to be a forest. I guess that's what strip mines do. Exalted Angel. Lightning Bolt, some more swapped labels there. Scourge, Simplified Chinese. They got the language right. Stifle, nope. Stifle looks like this. It's a blue card. Similar problem here. Traditional Chinese, again, they got the language correct. But this is not a Xanted Swarm. That would be a green card. They look very different. And here is a Through the Breach and a Kiku Knight's Flower. Again, the labels were swapped here. Another error that we see a lot from BGS is that they have trouble identifying which set a card is from. Many new players have difficulty identifying older sets. That's fine if you don't know how, but if you don't know how, you shouldn't be charging people money and telling them you can do it accurately. BGS is supposed to be a professional company that is being paid to know the difference and label the card correctly. They should be especially familiar with the older sets because those are the cards most frequently sent in for grading. This is labeled as an alpha, but this is a beta card. Alpha, not alpha. I guess they improved the value of these beta cards by making them alpha, right? Another one? Not actually an alpha card. Oh, this one went the other way around. They labeled this as a beta, but it's not a beta. It's got those nice round alpha corners. Another beta that's actually an alpha card. That also says beta up at the top there on an alpha card. The picture's cut off on this one, so you'll have to trust me. That label says beta, and this is an alpha card. This was actually sent in with the same shipment as the previous card. Beta on a not beta card. That's alpha. Another one, beta on an alpha card. Beta on an alpha card. 
time walk. And beta on this alpha tropical island. One of the interesting things about the tropical island here is that the artist credit is incorrect on the alpha copy. This says Mark Poole, and they even got Mark to sign it here. But this only exists in alpha because Mark is not actually the artist for this. Jesper Mirfors is the correct artist, and this artist credit was corrected in beta. Okay, here is, let's see, this says it's a beta Sarah Angel. It, it is a Sarah Angel, but this is German. This is a German limited edition card. 1994. Look, it says right on it, the copyright date is not 1993. This unlimited Animate Dead, this is actually a revised card. Sorry, this isn't a better photo. It also has square corners, which is very unusual. They labeled this card as unlimited when it's actually a revised card. You can see the tap symbol here. Pretty good way to tell on lands. Here is a card they labeled as Antiquities. Italian. Antiquities was not printed in Italian. This is a set called Renaissance. They should really know the sets better than that. All right, revised edition. Nope, that's alpha. I guess that would be a serious downgrade. Another one, revised edition. That's This is actually an alpha card. All right, they labeled this one as revised, but it is an unlimited card. No tap symbol, the beveled border here. Sorry, BGS. Okay, revised edition. That doesn't look quite like a revised card. It has a big date here. Revised cards don't have that. It's also super dark looking. This is from a set called Summer Magic. It's a very rare set, and it's a pretty valuable card. A revised edition fog is worth a few cents. This is probably worth $100 or maybe $200. Probably more, graded as a 9. BGS does know what Summer Magic is. Well, sort of. They're at least aware of its existence, because they labeled these cards, these foil soul rings, as Summer Edition. I know that's sorry, a little hard to read the label there. There we go. Summer Edition Soul Ring. Now, that's definitely not Summer Edition. Foil cards didn't exist in 1994 when Summer Edition was created. No idea why BGS thought this might be from 1994. And here's another card they labeled as Summer Edition but this is actually a 4th edition island. See, it doesn't have the big date here. It has a small copyright date, and it says 1995 instead of saying 1994. There's no excuse for labeling alpha cards as revised on multiple occasions. Those two sets are very different. BGS appears to be less knowledgeable about magic cards than most of the customers they're serving. BGS is primarily a sports card company, if BGS can't consistently tell an unlimited card apart from a revised card, why should anyone trust them to tell a fake card from a real card, or be able to spot a rebacked card? This 4th edition island that BGS labeled as a summer edition island was advertised and sold as a summer island. Someone who trusted the BGS label paid $100 for this 4th edition island. Unfortunately, there have been many times that someone purchased a card based on the opinion on the BGS label, only to find that BGS made a mistake. Here's another one of those stories. A card store bought a large card collection. 
Their standard practice is to send all of the expensive cards to BGS for grading, regardless of the card's condition. They rely on BGS to accurately grade the cards. They do this because it improves the buyer confidence when a well-known third-party company has inspected the card. This is especially helpful for smaller card stores which buyers may not have heard of, or who may not be very experienced in magic. Let's say they might sell primarily comic books or something like that, and just occasionally deal in magic cards. By having a third-party company available, the smaller card store doesn't have to have a specialist on hand. This is really what grading companies are intended for, as described in the beginning of this video. It's a great idea, but it only works if the grading company knows what they're doing. The card store submitted this heavily inked Black Lotus to BGS. BGS correctly labeled the card as Authentic Altered. It is an authentic card, and it is altered by the heavy inking on the borders. However, BGS incorrectly labeled the card as Beta. When the store owner received the card back from BGS, they posted it for sale on eBay as an authentic Beta Lotus. It sold at a fair price for an inked Beta Lotus, which is not a cheap card. The buyer couldn't personally inspect the card through eBay and wasn't familiar with the store selling the card, so the decision to purchase was largely based on the reputation of BGS and what they said about the card on their label. When the buyer received the card, they immediately became suspicious that it might not be beta. They took several pictures of the card and found skilled people to look at the card for identification. Here's some of those pictures. Black Lotus. You can see the heavy inking here. If you look closely, you can see there's a little bit of white under the black on the bottom of all the letters. And here's a picture of the casting cost. It's a, it's a pretty good up-close picture. This, this line here is just a scratch in the case. Don't worry about that. The conclusion was that this card is actually an unlimited card. Here's a nice chart that was provided by European Grading Service to help the public in identifying problems like this. The position of the black layer relative to the other color layers is called registration. Magic cards are printed in a four color printing press. You have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And those color layers have to be properly aligned with each other for the image to be in focus. That alignment changes between printings, and it, it can also change if a single printing is large enough. It has a lot to do with the print run size. Things can shift a little during printing. But for alpha and beta rares, the print run is small enough that it really doesn't move much. So you can see here this alpha lotus. The zero, you can see how it's centered within this circle. It's kind of down and to the right. And the Beta Lotus is up and to the right. And the Unlimited, the zero, is up and to the left. And then the Collector's Edition, International Edition, and Artist Proof are more or less centered. These three were all printed together at the same time. This one matches this one. We also looked at other features of the card, but this is the easiest thing to show you here in the video. The buyer had purchased an inked Unlimited Lotus for the price of a Beta Lotus based on the BGS analysis of the card. There's a big value difference between a Beta Lotus and an Unlimited Lotus. The seller and eBay both wanted to trust the BGS label because accurate identification was the purpose of submitting the card to BGS, and this made it difficult to return the card. BGS was at fault for mislabeling the card, so the buyer contacted BGS. BGS does not accept any financial responsibility for the accuracy of their grading, and they're only willing to correct an informational error for the person who originally submitted the card to them. Basically, BGS didn't want to talk to the buyer because the buyer isn't the person who submitted the card. BGS is perfectly fine with their labels having errors on the cards being circulated, regardless of the financial damages that causes. 
That probably has something to do with why I have so many BGS errors here to show you in this video. If you're not the person who submitted the card to BGS, don't put faith into their label because they won't stand behind it. When buying a card, even a graded card, it's very important to look at the card itself. Buy the card, not the grade. So did the buyer just have to take a big loss on the card? Luckily, the seller was more upstanding than BGS. They were willing to review the card identification information, agreed that the card was unlimited, and made it right with the buyer. Part of resolving this issue included the buyer purchasing a second inked unlimited lotus that BGS had also inaccurately labeled as beta. Here's the second one. Here's a picture of them together. You can see the serial numbers are different. This is the second one again. It's a, it's a closer picture of the font here. You can see the white under all the letters. Now, what causes that is just like in the casting cost, the whole black layer is shifted up and left. So this white area that, that would have been either part of the lettering or covered by the black is now visible. It's exposed because the black is shifted. And here's the casting cost on the second card. No scratch on this case. And there's the comparison again, in case you need to see that. The buyer cracked both cards out of their BGS cases to get rid of the inaccurate BGS labels and had both cards altered so they no longer resemble beta lotuses at a glance. The buyer was very lucky that this worked out. Generally, stories like this don't have happy endings. Okay, this next card here, this is a rebacked lotus. Yeah, BGS graded a rebacked lotus. They didn't label it as authentic altered, they actually graded it. It was posted for sale, and many people quickly pointed out that it was a rebacked card. The seller promptly took it down and contacted the person they got it from. I've only heard good things about the seller. They simply didn't notice that it was rebacked. You have to be careful what you buy, even for graded cards. In addition to rebacked cards, you also need to watch out for alpha clipped corners. Alpha cards used to be cheaper than beta cards because the different corner shape caused them to be considered marked cards. Since alpha prices started being more than beta prices, some people have clipped beta corners in an attempt to pass off the cards as alpha for more money. BGS doesn't always catch this alteration. Someone approached me with a clipped beta tropical island that BGS had graded as an alpha card. Now, you remember that we talked about tropical islands a minute ago. Alpha tropical islands are easily recognizable because they have an error which shows Mark Poole as the artist. This was corrected to Jesper Mirfors for the beta print run. The person who had the card resubmitted the card to BGS four times, twice in person, to explain the problem to BGS, and every time BGS continued to incorrectly label the card as Alpha. As far as I know, the photos were never posted publicly, so I won't share them here. Here's that uh, picture again to go with the reback so you can see the position of the zero. That may help you. You can also tell by the alignment um, of the cut. And if you had the card in person, you could inspect it uh, more thoroughly. That was done. It is a reback. Anyone who is trusting BGS for card authentication should pay attention here. BGS labeled this Mox Emerald as an authentic beta card. Authentic beta. They thought it was altered, which usually means inked, so they didn't grade it, but they did slab it and say that it was an authentic beta card. It is not an authentic magic card. The card's not even a reback. It's a complete fake. Someone sent BGS a completely fake card and BGS slabbed it as an authentic card. Here's a close-up. You can see the case here. This is the card in the case. 
If you're familiar with old cards and authentication, you'll know right away that this is a fake. Anyone with some experience can spot this. For those of you who aren't experienced, I have a comparison. This is what a real one looks like. Now that you can see them side by side, the difference is pretty obvious. A few years ago, I saw another BGS graded fake card. It was actually graded, not just labeled as authentic. It was a German limited edition dual LAN purchased by a friend. The card was cracked open to be played and then discovered to be fake. I didn't save pictures back then, but I wanted to remind everyone to thoroughly inspect graded cards before cracking them open. It's difficult to return a graded card after you've cracked it open. Someone also showed me three more counterfeit cards that BGS slabbed as authentic altered, and two more counterfeit cards that BGS actually graded. They all resembled Beta Power 9 cards, and their BGS serial numbers indicated that they were submitted in 2015. I have pictures of these, but they were sent to me privately, so I won't share the pictures here. That's seven completely counterfeit magic cards that I've seen BGS slab. They slab a lot of cards, so there's probably more examples that I haven't seen yet. If you're concerned about counterfeits improving to the point that grading companies can't catch them, that's not what's happening here. This issue isn't about improved counterfeit quality. Every one of these counterfeits was caught by someone who knew what they were doing. This is simply BGS not paying attention to what they're doing, which can also be seen from all the other examples in this video. Speaking of not paying attention, here's a card that they shipped without sealing the case. If someone wanted to swap the card with a different card, or reuse another label from a card that had been cracked open, this is everything they need. This is essentially an ungraded loose card because there's nothing to associate the grade with this specific card when the slab is open. The person who submitted this is really lucky that the card wasn't damaged by the unsealed case during shipping. It wouldn't take much of a pinch to ruin that 9.5 score forever. Oh, it happened again. There's another one. And again. Oops. So far in this video, I've only covered errors that were clear and obvious. Errors also regularly occur during grading, but they're more difficult to prove because grading is subjective. It's the opinion of the grader. If you've heard the terms undergraded or overgraded, that's referring to the inaccuracy of the grader's opinion, but it's only based on the opinion of the person making the statement. Grading is not based on objective measurements, not even for centering, though it probably should be. If you crack open a graded card and send it in to be graded, there's a decent chance that it will be returned with a different grade. This regularly happens because people try to get the best possible score for their card. This also means that the population reports are inaccurate, except for 10s, because 10s don't get resubmitted. People keep 10s. Even though grading is subjective, here's a few examples of when the grader obviously made a bad call. Collector's Edition International, Sarah Angel. Collector's Edition always has square corners. The square corners look pretty good to me from here, and yet they gave it a grade of 4 on the corners. They thought the corners didn't look like they were supposed to look, but they're actually supposed to be square corners. Here's that unlimited revised, actually revised, animate dead again with the square corners. Now this card is supposed to have rounded corners, like Revised normally has, and they gave this card a 9 for corners, even though they're not like they're supposed to be. Like, this is not ideal for Revised. And then uh, this card, Centering 9.5. That's almost perfect centering. 
Doesn't that look even on all four sides to you? I don't think so. This last picture is a message from an international BGS customer who sent a decent sized order of cards in to be graded, and every card came back ungraded with an authentic altered label. BGS claims they're all inked, even though the owner witnessed some of the cards being opened pack fresh. The guy was pretty upset after paying for grading and international shipping both ways, plus a long wait, only to receive zero graded cards. BGS is not interested in taking a second look at the cards to see if they could possibly be a mistake. The guy is just out the money. He's going to send them all to PSA next. This was a regular problem for a few months. Many people submitted pack fresh cards only to have BGS claim the cards were inked. If these cards were cracked open and resubmitted, they would usually grade just fine. People in the graded card community should already be aware of these grading issues. This video is geared more towards informing people who aren't very familiar with graded cards. It's always important to be careful what you buy. Grading companies do make mistakes. Buy the card, not the grade. Grading errors find their way into the misprint and anti-counterfeit magic communities, and we're seeing them with an increasing frequency. They're so common that we've stopped approving them in the misprint group. BGS should be aware that this is a growing problem and be taking steps to fix it, but instead we're seeing higher numbers of mistakes. It's hurting their reputation, which is not only bad for them, but also bad for everyone who's invested in the BGS brand by grading cards. BGS is doing this to themselves. This video focused primarily on BGS because they're the most popular grading company for Magic cards, and because we see far more mistakes from them than from any other company. I don't want to leave the other companies out, though. PSA is extremely well known in the grading community. They also make mistakes, but not nearly as many. Here's a few examples. This is a typo. Wordly Tutor. Another typo. Gattering. This one has the wrong card name. The name of the card is not Jesper Mirfors. The name of the card is Bayou. This card is labeled as Alpha, even though it's actually a beta card. This is labeled as Unlimited when it's actually revised. And this card is labeled as Summer Edition when it's actually just revised. I know of four completely counterfeit cards that PSA has graded. Three of them were resembling Power 9 cards and were graded in 2008, and the other looked like a Snapcaster Mage graded around 2016. The big difference is that PSA is willing to stand behind their work. If you get a counterfeit card inside a PSA slab, PSA is willing to buy the card to get it off the market. Even if you've had the card for a decade and you weren't the person who submitted it for grading, PSA will make it right. That extra protection has a lot of value if you're buying over the internet and can inspect the card in person. By doing this, PSA keeps their errors out of circulation, protecting their reputation and their customers. It's good business. PSA recently opened a Japanese branch office, which is a huge step in the right direction for serving international customers. European grading service has been around since 2015. Magic cards are their main focus, not sports cards. They've reached out to me to discuss some aspects of card authentication, and they're extremely experienced at detecting rebacks. They provided the Lotus cast and cost comparison photo that was used earlier in this video. They provided it publicly, not, not just to me for this video, but they posted it for everyone to use because they 
really want the community to not get fooled by stuff like that. I haven't heard of any errors on any of the labels for cards graded by the European Grading Service. Many other small grading companies have come and gone over the years. This isn't the first video to talk about grading mistakes. Rudy from Alpha Investments recently made a video on this topic, and there have also been videos made by Vintage Magic, Open Boosters, and others. I'll put links to these other videos in the video description down below in case anyone wants more content on this topic. Catch you next time!